share a little bit of uh, our stories, and then, um, you know, I'll give you fair warning now. We're going to challenge you. We're going to give you two choices. The Bible says you're either for me or you're against me. We're not going to play with anybody's emotions. I'm going to try to trip anybody up. Tonight, you decide if everything that is happening, you decide tonight if it's all real, if it's not just a story. You decide tonight if Jesus is God and he loves you, then you have to react and you have to respond to that. Whether you've never heard it before or whether you've been going to this church or another church your entire life. Today, God wants to fill you with the spirit. He wants to change your life. And he wants to change this world upside down using you. So when the time comes, it's either yes or no, okay? I, uh, I wasn't raised in the church, you know. I, uh, I grew up Catholic, so I smoke weed, but I never ripped God's word to smoke weed. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> Before everybody. Smoked a lot of weed, but didn't always had the fear of God in my heart. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this was the truth. This was the word of God. This was the truth. I wasn't. This was holy. I wasn't. So I just was going to let that be. You know what I mean? But uh, I always respected. Uh, I come from um, my grandmother and my mother. They were from Italy. I have a grandfather from uh, the island of Guam for any of you Chamorros in the house. I have uh, my grandmother was from Hawaii. My other grandfather was from Mexico. So I'm all mixed up. I'm, <laughs> I'm a mutt completely, and there's other things added in the mix. And I always had, um, just from my grandmother and my family, I always had a respect for God. I just never had a relationship with them, you know. It was more of a routine type of thing. I knew that we went to church, uh, you know, right before midnight, and then we were allowed to open up our presents afterwards. You know, we had like a little suit, me and my cousin, and my grandfather got us a suit. And if we went to church, we'd, you know, whatever time it was, right after midnight, we got to open our presents, you know. Or got to go uh, for Easter, you know. It's more of a routine than, than anything. But I always had a love and a, a respect for God. Um, I grew up in a young family. Uh, my uncles and my aunts, just, you know, 14, 15, 16, you know, uh, moms and dads. Married young, still doing their thing, partying, uh, selling drugs, getting high, just trying to figure it out. You know, some of you young people just trying to figure it out. You're in that situation, you know. So we watched a lot of things uh, growing up, and um, one day, uh, my uncle, he was separated from my aunt, and he, uh, she kicked him out, finally had enough of him, I guess, and he was pretty much living on the streets and bouncing back and forth. I'll try to keep a long story short, because <laughs> we're running for time. <laughs> we're, we're, we're running for time, okay. So, long story short, he's like wandering homeless, ready to kill himself, you know, and uh, he ended up walking into this old theater in San Diego. I'm from San Diego. Uh, it was Horizon Christian Fellowship, Mike McIntosh's church. Yeah, yeah man, Mike. And, uh, <laughs> and he walked in there, and the same thing. He just stumbled upon this church sitting in the back of this theater. And uh, at the end of the night, you know, after the truth was given and after the message was given, he was, the invite was given to come forward and give his life to the Lord, and he did that. You know, as scared as he was, as high as he was, as frightened as he was, he still, you know, his chest was pounding and he did that. He picked up whatever courage and strength that he had and he had his hoodie on and he walked right down and said, I want to try this Jesus out. And thank God that he did. You know, he went back home. He told my aunt and everybody that he had gotten saved. And I'm sure he called up all his other family and told me he got saved. And they just thought he was crazy. He's probably higher than ever before, you know. And, uh, but he didn't preach to anybody. He just said, you'll see, because God's going to give me back my family. He's going to restore everything that the enemy has ripped off from me. And he did that. He just kept pursuing God, seeking after God. And God started to do a work in his life. And then, you know, he would do just that. He would give him back my aunt and then my cousin and everybody, just like a little trickle effect. It wasn't this religious thing. It was life changed. It wasn't some guy just preaching at us, telling us we had to get our lives right because he was a wreck himself. But God had transformed his life, and it was evident. We could see that. And one by one, you know, just the family started, God just started picking them off one by one. Um, and my mom got saved. You know, I have two uh, stepsisters. And, uh, you know, I was just doing my thing with my friends, too, getting high and stuff. And my, uh, when I was a teenager, my mom got diagnosed with leukemia. And I remember when she got diagnosed, I remember sitting at the hospital and, 
you know, when the doctor gave us the news and she was bawling her eyes out and she said, you know, what, what did I do? And the doctor said, nothing. It, it, just, it just happens, you know. And she went through her remission and chemotherapy, all that stuff. And through all that, I just continued to see the love of God. Like, here's this woman dying, but she still has the joy of the Lord, you know, in her life. While I'm still continuing to do my thing with my friends and, and run around and just kind of toy around with this respect that I have for God, but never really having a relationship with them. And, um, you know, long story short, she gets sick again and um, ends up going back to the hospital, you know. But just right before that, I remember I came home one time and uh, I was high and I was trying to, you know, sneak past, you know, just do that, that quiet, you know, nonchalant walk to my room, you know, try to pass everybody up so nobody knows. And I remember she was sitting by my room and uh, she was sitting there and she used to wear this cowboy hat with like a little wig you know, because she didn't have no hair. <laughs> and uh, she was sitting there, so I couldn't get past her. And, and she said, son, you know, I just, I'm worried about you. I, you've lost that, you know, just that love inside you, just your heart and your mind. And, you know, she just kind of called me out. She challenged me. And she said, son, when I die, I want to know that you and your sisters are going to be in heaven with me. And I said, mom, don't, don't talk like that. And she said, no, son, when I die, I need to know that, you and your sisters are going to be in heaven with me. I said, yeah, Mom, cool. You know, what, what do you want me to do? He said, come to Harvest Crusade with me. It is in San Diego, Harvest Crusade. And I was like, I just, you know, I just wanted to please her hard. I went, I like, yeah, I'll, I'll do whatever you want. Whatever makes you happy, I'll do it. Went to Harvest Crusade. It was amazing. It was awesome. It wasn't necessary for me, and nothing changed. You know, I just wanted to please my mom, um, you know. Fast forward a little bit of time, she would end up going to the hospital. I remember going to this show, and this punk rock show, and then afterwards later going to stay with my friends and getting high. And she was, it was just supposed to be like a checkup and a routine, you know, and, but she had gotten sick. And anyways, I was, one day I called, uh, the next day I was just partying with my, with my boys and stuff. I had, um, you know, I called my stepfather at the time and said, I'm not going to be able to cru- cruise the hospital today, but tell mom I love her. And, and then I got this text, or this page at the time, it was pagers, you know, big old things, right, bricks. And uh, she's, it was my aunt, and I called her back to the hospital, and she said, I think you should come down here, you know, your mom don't look too good. And so, you know, I, I jetted down there as soon as I could, and I remember, uh, you know, going into this hospital room, and she was laying there, and she was shivering, and, you know, it, this is kind of when it all just hit me, like, what, what the heck is going on? And I went in, and... Um, you know, I went to go see what was going on, and she, you know, she was shaking, her teeth was rattling, and she said, um, she said, hi, son. And that would be the, the last time I'd ever hear her voice, you know. I stayed there all week, all week long, trying to figure out, slowly but surely, she'd go, just, you know, would be out of it, except she could hear you, the doctor was tell us, well, she could hear you, she could understand, you know, the, the heart, the mind, for a week, you know. I remember just sitting in this, in this hospital bed for a week, and at this time, the doctor would come in every night and say, just be prepared because she's probably going to go, you know, by morning time. And then he'd come back in the morning of the day, you know, just well, be ready because she's probably going to go today. And he did this all week long. And in the meantime, we have family flying in, you know, from everywhere. My mom was a very loved person. And, uh, you know, then one day towards the end of the week, the doctor ends up coming in, and he says, you know, it's not a medical term or... You know, this is not one for the books, but what we call this here at the hospital is, um, is mother's heart. And he said, the reason why, you know, you're, this, this woman won't die, her body won't let go, is because it's pretty much controlled by the heart, you know. And she said, he said, the doctor said that she doesn't want to leave her children behind. And I remember, it's like, God, he was just speaking to me, and I instantly, you know, you get those flashbacks, his flashback to this time when she's telling me all this was going to happen, and it was like, and this confusion and this anger, everything, you know. Here I am, confused, and my mom seems like she's got it all figured out, and I'm the one that's bitter, I'm the one that's mad, I'm the one that's angry and confused. And finally, when I went out, my family made me go clean up and finally leave the hospital for the first time in the week, go get cleaned up, and I was in the parking lot, and I think I might have said my first big boy prayer for the first time, you know, and I just, I cried out to God. I said, God, I, you know, if you take my mom, either I'm going to be, you know, I'm either going to lose it, I'm going to hurt somebody, hurt myself. I don't know what I'm going to do, but, you know, 
I, I, need, my, I need her Jesus. I don't want the world's Jesus. I, I want her Jesus. And I said, God, if you can forgive me for my sins, please do. I don't need anybody to tell me I'm a sinner because I know that. That's, that's, that's not headline news. I know that I'm you know, not worthy and, and what I do is wrong. But if you can take that away, come into my life and make me like my mom. I want that peace. I want that joy. And if you can do that, then I'll, I'll follow you. I'll serve you. And I believe God did that at that moment. I believe he forgave me my sins. He came into my heart. He didn't give me religion. He gave me a one-on-one VIP access to the kingdom of heaven right then and there. And when I went home, I cleaned up. I went back. I whispered into my mom's ears. I said, go, go ahead and be with Jesus now because, you know, me and the girls were going to be all right. And it wasn't but some short time after that, you know, that she would take her last breath and then go and be with the Lord. And all that was real to me. The Lord had captured my heart at that moment. I was like, okay, I got to grow up. I got to stop, <laughs> you know, I got I to gotta figure out who this Jesus is. You know, I got I to gotta surrender to him and give him my life. And, and as I let him do that, all I wanted to do was tell my friends, all I wanted to do is my community, my people around me to know that I was different and my life had changed and that God had done that. And somehow I ended up in a band that I never wanted, never ever thought of being in or even had a desire to pick up a microphone and do anything like that. I didn't even listen to that kind of music. I was more into like reggae music and hip hop and it wasn't even really my thing. But I thought, you know what, people listen. I listen to music. I love music. You know, I'm going to these shows. I'm, you know, my friends are listening. Maybe they'll see that I can scream these things and tell them that God loves them, you know. And, it, <laughs> and through that, it just, I think God always honored that, that heart of just wanting to go out and see the world, you know, get saved. I have a big heart for young people. I, want, I don't want to see them get lied to and manipulated by the world and by the enemy. I want to see them have that peace and that, just that forgiveness that only God can do, you know. And, and God did that. He allowed me to be in this band. And here I am learning how to be a Christian and then in this band and then selling records and making money and then being on TV and traveling the world and just experiencing all these things at the same time, trying to balance, you know, my whole walk with God. And, you know, and I'd, I'd be a liar if, liar if I said, uh, you know, that, that I have it figured out or that I figured out because that whole time I was trying to figure out everything, how to walk this walk. You know, who, who am I supposed to be? What's the Christian that the world wants me to be, the church wants me to be? Everything. Who, who am I supposed to be, you know? And in that meantime, through, just through success and just with everything, you know, little compromises and, you know, I'm speaking for myself, just little compromises and, 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 and falling away from God. And little by little, you know, when you give a little bit of room for the enemy that wants to come in and literally just kill you, and rip you into shreds and send you straight to hell because that's where he knows he's going. Little by little, he doesn't come in and chop your head off with a, with a hatchet. It's like a little scratch until before you know it, your head is completely severed. And he did that, and I started to see that and compromise and see that in my life. And for me, I didn't want to just keep playing shows and, and traveling the world and making money and... In the meantime, I'm, I'm lost in my own salvation with God. It's like I had to just go home, you know. I canceled a European tour. I had to go home. I had to be with my wife, you know, who I'll be with 20 years, married 15. I got three beautiful kids. That's the only thing in this world that means anything to me. <laughs> or at least the number one thing, you know. And I needed to go home to make sure that I was who I was supposed to be. And I didn't want to deceive myself because I said a prayer a long time ago and forgot what that was all about. Because in all these years, just trying to figure it out, throwing it out into the world, throwing into all this stuff and just forgetting that intimacy and that one-on-one relationship that God wants to have with me. And through that, I put it all aside and I just sat at God's feet and, and, and desperate, desperate for the Lord. And I just said, God, please just make yourself real to me. I don't, I don't want to have that routine of Christianity where I say my prayer and, and I go to church when I can and I read, you know, my proverb a day so that if another Christian asks me if I read today, I can say I did. I don't want to do that. I want to know you into me. I, I, I know that this is the truth. I know this book, this word is alive. Please, I just, I want to be close to your heart, Lord, and work through all my garbage. Again, still all my stuff. And God, he did that. But he took me to a place 
when I hooked up with all these guys and the whosoever is not me, it's not Ryan or, or whoever. Whosoever is us. The whosoever is, the whosoever is, a, is a people. God said, for, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes should not perish but have everlasting life. God called us whosoever's and said, I just want you to believe in my son. He didn't list the million things you're supposed to get right or you're supposed to do right now. He said, I want you to believe in my son. Whosoever believes. And that was me when I gave my life to the Lord in that parking lot. The other years after that was the, was the trial and error, you know, trying to please and trying to figure it all out. And in that, losing my way and losing my connection with the Lord. And it's that moment I said, God, I don't want to be anything in your kingdom, in this world. I want to be a whosoever. Because for some reason, that's when I got it. Everything else was kind of confusing just in the journey. But I don't want to ever leave this spot of brokenness, of a place where I was desperate and I needed you, God. And that's where God met me. And I had to go back to that spot of just letting God do what he does best. Making it all, you know, come alive in my heart and my spirit. Just cleansing me. Giving me all his promises. Forgiving me. Letting me know it's all going to be good. Just keep trusting me and following me. I don't expect you to figure it out. You just keep believing in my son. And I'll come in. I'll take the things out. I'll, I'll tell you what you can and what you can't do. And I'll lay those things I'll show you how to get rid of those things. I'll show you how to put those things in. I'll show you how it all works. Not him, not her, not this church, not that church, not religion. But my son Jesus will do that. And I sat at God's feet in brokenness and begging him, just keep doing that, keep doing that. And he lined me up with Ryan and, and all these other cats that were in broken places themselves. They just said, I don't want religion, man. I can't leave this whosoever mentality because I need accountability I need guys that are going to check me or going to call me out whenever I think I got it figured out. I want to do my thing. Whenever I put God on the back burner, the, a real brother is going to call me out and say, dude, what's up, dude? What's up, homie? You slipping? Okay, cool. Well, let's pray. Let's go before the Lord. Not black, put you on blast or not try to use you or manipulate you because you're somebody. It's just like, dude, it starts right here. This is a brotherhood. We are a brotherhood. And all of a sudden, God just started bringing people in our way. And now it's like, Okay, cool. As we're getting restored and built up and God's doing the things, we can't just sit in our church and be lazy. It's like, okay, well, God, you keep doing this crazy thing in my life. I, I want to, I got to keep telling the world. I got to keep telling the world. And as much as I've been around the world and looked into the faces of young people all around, you know, you see good and evil. You see the enemy coming in and ripping our kids off and, 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 and making slaves out of them and using religion and using just everything that's out there to manipulate them so that he can rip them off. And until we go out there on their level and say, hey, whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. When we go out and say, hey, I get it. We're honest, we're vulnerable, we're open. Saying, I don't got it figured out, man. I just, all I can give you is Jesus. All I can give you is Christ and Christ crucified. That's what I know. That's what I know, that, that God is so holy, his name, he's so good. And no one has to tell me that I'll never be that way. And because I, can, I can't even look at God's holiness. Oh, he, you mean he sent, okay, he sent his son Jesus to take the price. Okay, I can get with that. I can receive that. I, I, can, I can believe that. And then, it's, then the grace comes in and the love comes in and this, the mercy. And it starts to become this one-on-one relationship with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And that's, that's where I'm at with these guys. It's just... Wanting to be open, wanting to go out. Because I do believe that these are the last days. You look around you, this world is bananas. It's crazy. I don't, you don't need a scholar. You don't need CNN or Fox News. It's crazy. And, and, but it's all in here. God's showing us that it's all in here. This stuff's tripping me out. Guys. I don't have Christianity to figure out, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm living it. It's breathing. It's alive in front of me. And God's showing us all these things, and he wants us to be ready. And he wants you, if you don't know him, he wants you to experience him tonight. He wants you to make a choice. He wants you to make a stand. He doesn't want you to leave here that's in that same place. He wants you, or he wants to change you. He wants you to bring everything that you have, your doubts, your fears, your baggage, your anger, everything you have, and you leave it right here at this church today and let God change you because he wants to do that. And if you've been going to church and it's your routine or, you know, my mommy and my daddy are Christians and so I come to church 20 days a week, but I just don't get it. Well, he wants to show you that this is for you. It's not your mommy and daddy's 
relationship. It's yours. And he wants to use you and he wants to change you and he wants you to go out and he wants you to stand up for righteousness and for what's good. And he wants you to be that soldier and that warrior because this is hardcore stuff. It's not weak. I think if it was just too easy and you can just figure it out, I just want nothing to do with it. It is a challenge, man. It's hardcore to keep pressing on and to keep going for it. When everybody else is not doing it, that's punk rock to me. To keep going after the Lord when the rest of the world is falling away. I'm not following the rest of the world. I'm following straight after his majesty. I love you guys, man. Ryan's going to share a little bit.